Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to migrate a Hyper-V virtual machine to vSphere using Zerto. The migration method requires pre-installation of the VMware tools, so if you're following along and haven't prepared the VMware tools MSI package for installation on a Hyper-V virtual machine, you can find the link to that blog post in the description of this video. All right, so here's my Hyper-V environment, and this is the test machine that I'm gonna move over. Um, I've already performed those prerequisite steps, and I've got the VMware tools on the desktop for that virtual machine. So I'm just gonna go through the installer and uh, pick a typical install, let that finish. Um, by the time it finishes, if it does ask you for a reboot, um, that's optional. Uh, if this is a production system and you don't wanna have to reboot it, that's fine, because when we perform the migration into uh, VMware, uh, from Hyper-V, uh, the system's going to boot up clean anyway, so uh, you can save yourself a reboot by uh, skipping it here. So as part of this, what I want to also simulate is uh, showing or proving that when Zerto was used coming from a different environment into vSphere, um, that we can actually also maintain the original IP address of the machine. Um, that said, we can also re-IP the virtual machine. Uh, but before I can demonstrate that, I'm going to be logging in here to the system uh, via the console so I don't get kicked off, and I'm going to assign it a static IP address, uh, which will track and uh, make sure that it gets into our configuration, uh, so that when we do fail the system over, it just comes up, and it's on the network, and it works. Uh, a lot quicker than the alternative methods that I've, I've also tested where tools were installed after the fact. By pre-installing the VMware tools, you won't need to wait for the first boot, which will take a while as new devices are found. Additionally, pre-installing the tools will save you time when you have to then install upon recovery uh, subsequently and manually uh, set the network configuration in the operating system following a reboot. Uh, the most you're going to have to do using this method that you're seeing now is install the VMware tools on your target machines, create the VPG in Zerto, and then when everything is synced up, run the move operation and watch your VMs boot up. So what we'll do now is log into Zerto on the Hyper-V side and create that virtual protection group to get this migration started. Right, so we'll click on VPGs here, click the new VPG button, give it a name. And then we're going to select that VM that we're targeting. We're going to choose the VMware site as our destination recovery site. Select a host or cluster, a data store to replicate these VMs to this VM to. Um, and then I'm just going to set a one hour journal because we're using the, the move operation. Um, I don't need more than the minimum amount of checkpoints. So now here I'm choosing my production network and my failover test networks um, where I want the VM to come up in either operation. Uh, choose a folder in vSphere to have this VM registered in. Uh, we can move that after we've got it done. And here is very important, um, even though we're not changing the IP address, uh, because we are going from Hyper-V to VMware, we still need to statically assign the address in here as if we were going to re-IP the machine. Um, and that's because uh, with one set of drivers uh, or tools, um, like the integration services from Hyper-V, uh, you're going to have a specific NIC uh, that upon recovery on the VMware side using VMware tools and their drivers, uh, it's going to create a brand new NIC. So what we want to do is make sure those network settings are going to get into that NIC. Um, otherwise, we'll end up with a hidden NIC, a non ip NIC, and then you'd have to log in there and manually do everything yourself.
So what's happening now after we've clicked done is that the VPG itself is getting created in Zerto um, and then Zerto will uh, start initial sync. Uh, once we've got that initial sync completed, we'll end up in meeting SLA at some point where now we're sending just the, the change blocks. Um, at any moment after you get to that point after the initial sync is when we can start uh, leveraging the move operation to get this VM out of Hyper-V and into vSphere. All right, so I've sped up that initial sync uh, through editing. Um, so what we're gonna do now is go over to Zerto on the vSphere side and select that VPG that we've had replicating. Uh, we'll go down to move and select VPG. And we're just gonna go through this wizard here. Um, I choose for shutdown just in case the integration service tools don't get the guest OS shutdown command. Uh, Zerto will power it off. Um, and then I'll click start move. Now the fun part about doing this is, and, and it, you know, I've done this so many times, um, it's still fun for me to watch. Is I'll go over to the Hyper-V side or or any of the, uh, and either side really, and just watch all the tasks that are taking place. So here we see in Hyper-V that the VM is now shut down, um, and then on the vSphere side we'll see that VM gets registered in the inventory here. There it is. And so right now, uh, Zerto's inserted a clean checkpoint after that shutdown is completed. Uh, it's replicated it over to the vSphere side um, into the journal. Um, and now we are powering up that VM uh, to that point in time where it will remain uncommitted uh, and we'll get a chance to either roll it back or commit the, the migration. Uh, and that's useful because uh, when the system comes up, we wanna be able to log into it uh, verify that what we were expecting to see did in fact happen, which is the network settings are there, uh, the VM is on the network, the system is operational. Um, once that's all completed and verified, then you can go ahead and commit, and that's at that point where Zerto will start cleaning up everything it did on, on the, the Hyper-V uh, source side. All right, once we're logged in, we're gonna check the network settings and uh, we should see, there it is. Uh, so this shows that the, the VM is now on the network or it has a NIC that, that sees a network. Um, but what we'll also do is go in here, open the command prompt and just check the IP configuration. And there it is, uh, everything as we were expecting. Uh, we'll see if I can ping the gateway. And we can do that. Let's see if I can get out to the internet. Yep, so so the system is now on the network, right? And it's, uh, Windows is running. Um, you know, at this point, we just validate everything works and everything's good. We can sign out, close the console, um, go back into Zerto at this point and commit the job or the operation. So we'll do that by clicking the little checkbox there. Uh, we can turn on reverse protect. Um, and I typically recommend that during a migration um, because if, if something does come up in the, in the target site where you just migrated to um, and, or you, you left a critical piece of the application behind and now you're having issues, um, you can then roll it back at that point or fail it back over or move it back over to the other side. So um, always a good fail safe. Uh, once you've uh, been there long enough, so you can keep it there for a week, keep it for two weeks. Uh, once everything is good and everyone is signed off, then you can go into Zerto and just delete that virtual protection group. So uh, you're basically telling it, I no longer need you to protect it back to Hyper-V. Well, there you have it. We've successfully migrated a virtual machine from Hyper-V to vSphere using Zerto in a clean and repeatable way. If you found this useful, please give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment. Uh, please subscribe to get up any updates on new content and visit my blog where you can learn more. Thanks and have a great day.